Welcome to Understand the Math. In the video description, you'll find a link to guided notes that can be downloaded and filled in as you follow along with the video. In this video, I'm going to define what it means for an angle to be in standard position and complete some example problems on drawing an angle in standard position. I'll then define what coterminal angles are, outline the steps for finding them, and end by completing some example problems. Let's begin by talking about angles in standard position. Angles in standard position provide a consistent and standardized way to describe and analyze angles in trigonometry. Angles are commonly drawn on an XY coordinate plane. Angles can occur in any position on the coordinate plane, but for comparison purposes, it's good if they're placed in the same position whenever possible. The name for that same position is called standard position. An angle is in standard position when two things happen. The first thing is that the vertex of the angle is at the origin. The second requirement is the initial side of the angle is along the x-axis. And when those two requirements are met, we say that an angle is in standard position. I have a picture here of two different angles in standard position. The first one is a picture of a positive angle, which we'll call theta. So let's label this as a positive angle in standard position. The second picture is of a negative angle, which we'll indicate as theta. And let's label this as a negative angle in standard position. Notice that for both of these examples, the vertex is at the origin and the initial side of the angle lies along the x-axis. We'll now look at some example problems where we're given an angle that we need to draw in standard position. Before we begin drawing these angles, it will be helpful to make a diagram of the four quadrants of the xy plane. On the right, we have zero degrees or zero. At the top, we have 90 degrees or pi over two. On the left, we have 180 degrees or pi. And at the bottom, we have 270 degrees or three pi over two. Let's now label our quadrants. Our first quadrant we'll label as quadrant run, and that's in the upper right hand side. The second quadrant, quadrant two. Third quadrant is down on the lower left, and then the fourth quadrant is on the lower right. The first angle that we're going to draw is 30 degrees. Let's note that this is in the first quadrant, and we can draw it like this. We'll first draw our initial side, and then our terminal side at 30 degrees. So that is an angle in standard position of 30 degrees. Our next angle is pi over three. It may be easier to convert this to degrees in order to draw it, so let's go ahead and let's do that. So we have pi over three, and we're going to multiply it by 180 degrees divided by pi 
to change it to degrees. I have a video on reviewing that concept if you would like to go watch that. So this gives us 60 degrees. We can now note that this is in our first quadrant and we'll draw it. We begin again with the initial side and then the terminal side goes up here because we have 60 degrees. Our third angle is 135 degrees. Let's start by noting that 135 degrees lies between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. If we take 135 degrees and subtract 90 degrees, we end up with 45 degrees. So we know that we have to go 45 degrees past 90 degrees when we draw this angle. We can also note that this angle is in our second quadrant. So to draw this angle, we'll start with the initial side along the x-axis, and then we'll go 45 degrees past 90 degrees. So that gives us an angle in this position. Let's now look at some negative angles. Our first negative angle, number four, is minus 80 degrees. We're going to note that this is in quadrant four. And let's also note that at the bottom of our axis, we have minus 90 degrees. So to draw this angle, we'll write our initial side along the x-axis and then we'll go down minus 80 degrees, which is a little shy of minus 90 degrees. So there's our angle in standard position. For our last angle, we have minus 210 degrees. We'll note that minus 270 degrees is less than minus 210 degrees is less than minus 180 degrees. So our angle is in quadrant three. And if we take minus 210 degrees and add 180 degrees, we end up with minus 30 degrees. So this means that we're going to go minus 30 degrees past minus 180 degrees. So to draw this, we'll again start with our initial side along the x-axis, and we'll label the bottom part of our axis as minus 90 degrees, and we'll label the left part as minus 180 degrees. So we're going to go minus 180 degrees and go 30 more degrees past that. So that puts our angle right here. So this is our angle written in standard position. Let's now define what a coterminal angle is. A coterminal angle is an angle that shares the same initial and terminal sides. We'll start by looking at two examples. In our first example, we have a negative angle that's measured counterclockwise and equal to minus 240 degrees. One of its coterminal angles can be written like this and it is 120 degrees. It is a positive angle measured clockwise. So let's go ahead and write that down. It's a positive angle measured 
clockwise. In our second example, we have an angle of 480 degrees. So this is a positive angle greater than 360 degrees, and it's measured clockwise. One of its coterminal angles is 120 degrees. And just like the first example, that is a positive angle measured clockwise. You may have noticed on this second example, I said one of its coterminal angles. The reason I said that is every angle has infinitely many coterminal angles. The reason for that is that multiples of 360 degrees or 2 pi can be added or subtracted from an angle to get a coterminal angle. For example, for an angle equal to 120 degrees, a coterminal angle is going to be 120 degrees plus or minus n times 360 degrees, where n is 1, 2, 3, and so forth. Coterminal angles are often used when we have negative angles and angles greater than 360 degrees. The reason for this is that these angles are difficult to work with, so we'll often replace them with a coterminal angle that's easier to work with and is between 0 and 360 degrees. I'm now going to outline steps for finding coterminal angles and complete some example problems. Finding coterminal angles can be broken down into two cases. In the first case, we have an angle greater than 360 degrees or 2 pi, and we're asked to find a coterminal angle between 0 degrees and 360 degrees or between 0 and 2 pi. So when you have one of these problems, what you're going to do is you're going to keep subtracting 360 degrees or 2 pi until the angle is between 0 degrees and 360 degrees or is between 0 and 2 pi. In our second case, we have a negative angle, and we're again asked to find a coterminal angle between 0 degrees and 360 degrees, or between 0 and 2 pi. For angles like this, we're going to keep adding 360 degrees, or 2 pi, until our angle is between 0 degrees and 360 degrees, or between 0 and 2 pi. So in summary, for a positive angle greater than 360 degrees, we're going to keep subtracting 360 degrees. And for a negative angle, we're going to keep adding 360 degrees. Let's now do some examples. In these examples, we're going to find an angle between 0 and 360 degrees or between 0 and 2 pi that is coterminal with the given angle. Our first example, we have an angle of 748 degrees. That angle is greater than 360 degrees. 
So it falls under case one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by subtracting 360 degrees. So we have 748 degrees and we subtract 360 degrees. You can throw that in your calculator if you want. And we're left with 388 degrees. And we notice that this is still greater than 360 degrees. So this tells us we need to do it again. So let's do that. So now we're gonna start with 388 degrees, subtract 360 degrees, and we're left with 28 degrees, which is between zero and 360 degrees. So let's box this. And this 28 degrees is our coterminal angle. Our next one is in radians, and we begin by noticing that this is greater than 2 pi. I think these are a little bit harder because you end up adding or subtracting fractions. So we begin by subtracting 2 pi. So we have 3 pi, sorry, 13 pi over 3. We subtract 2 pi, so this is 13 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, which is 7 pi over 3. Notice this is still greater than 2 pi. So we're going to do it again. So we start with now 7 pi over 3, subtract 2 pi. So we have 7 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3 and we're left with pi over three. So we'll box this angle, and that is our coterminal angle, or an angle that is coterminal with 13 pi over three. We have two more examples to look at, and both of these are negative angles. So for these angles, we're going to have to add 360 degrees or 2 pi. So for number 3, we note that it is less than 0 degrees. So we're going to add 360 degrees, and this falls under case 2. So we have minus 425 degrees, and we're going to add 360 degrees, which leaves us with minus 65 degrees, which is still less than zero degrees. So let's do it again. We start now with minus 65 degrees. We add 360 degrees, and we end up with 295 degrees. And we'll go ahead and box that. So that is our coterminal angle. And it's positive, which is a lot easier to work with. In our last example, we start by noting that it's less than zero. So again, falls under case two. Because it's in radians, we're going to add two pi. So we have minus 21 pi over four. We're going to add two pi. So this is minus 21 pi over four plus, let's see, this is 8 pi over 4. Had to think about that for a minute. So this becomes minus 13 pi over 4, which is still less than 0. So we get to do it again. So minus 13 pi over 4 plus 2 pi is minus 13 pi over 4. Don't you just love fractions? I have a lot of students that don't like fractions, and I know they're difficult. So we're going to add 8 pi over 4, so we end up with minus 5 pi over 4, and uh-oh, that's still negative. I had to throw one problem in where we had to do it more than two times. So now we have minus 5 pi over 4. Hang with me. We're almost done. We're going to add 2 pi. So this is minus 5 pi over 4 
plus 8 pi over 4. And you end up with 3 pi over 4. Yay! So that's positive. So we can be done. And let's go ahead and box that. And that is our coterminal angle. So we got through those fractions. I would recommend that you review the definitions that we've gone over and rework some of these example problems so that you can know that you can do them on your own.